Hello and welcome to Rambly Running. Now normally on this channel I kind of run in a vaguely forwards direction and try desperately not to fall over. But very occasionally I will talk about other subjects and this video is one of those. <laughs> So this video it forms part of a series that I have t called uh, Project Green and the concept behind this is that I'm trying to remove fossil fuels from my life as far as I can, that's the plan. And one of the ways that I'm doing that is to get rid of my gas boiler and to install a heat pump. Now I had one previous video where I talked about kind of my thoughts on why I was going to do that and there's a link to that in the video description below. But don't worry if you didn't see that because this video is completely separate and in today's video we're actually going through the installation. Don't worry, it's not a technical thing. I am not a plumber and trust me, it's quite complicated. But I'm gonna be walking around as a kind of consumer type of person looking at the installation over the number of days that it took because it might be of interest if you're thinking of doing something similar. So let's crack on, let's have a look at my heat pump installation. So let's have a look at my current system. And I have a Worcester Bosch boiler. This is about 20 years old. So yeah, it's okay, but it's not nearly as efficient as it used to be. And it has had a few issues. And over here I have a water cylinder. This is a mega flow. Now I live in a chalet bungalow, which is why I've got a water cylinder. But in a new house, you normally have a water tank in the loft and it's gravity fed and that's what does your water. But if you get a heat pump, you have a water cylinder. Now that's not new for me. I will be having a water cylinder to replace my water cylinder. So let's have a look at what is happening at the end of day one and go upstairs and let's go inside the airing cupboard and we've got here the new water cylinder so that's new uh, it's a valiant water cylinder that's going in there it's just running on immersion at the moment so we've got enough hot water in there for a shower this evening which is good news uh going through here well you can see it's so i'm quite dark in there at the moment but that is all new space because that was completely blocked off before and that has actually got you can't really see it because all the tools are in there at the moment but that's got a couple of cylinders and things going on in there apparently it's going to be a whole load of pipe work as well but there will be a little bit of room in there for storage i suppose uh and then most importantly this is where the boiler was that is now gone and uh we've got a bit of extra space there for i don't know a shoe rack or something's going to go there we haven't decided yet but we've gained some space which is a bit of a bonus really now outside there's a bit of pipe work in place and uh, but that is where the heat pump is going to be going but no not a lot to look at out there just yet so yeah a lot going on day one complete okay it's the end of day two of the heat pump install and upstairs in the loft is where most of the action has taken place today there's an awful lot of pipes and things everywhere i'm sure at some point i'll find out what all the little things do that have been put in uh, but meanwhile elsewhere in the house uh, here in the lounge we have uh, a radiator in a new position so that's good those pipes that are over there are probably well they will i'll box them in or do something with them at some point make it look a bit nicer but that'll be okay for now so the radiator is in its new place so that's quite good um, out here we have again a new radiator in position uh, not actually hooked up yet and also upstairs there's another new radiator in position so out of all of the radiators three new radiators that have been put in and one has been moved there's one more new radiator sorry no two radiators new radiators have been put in one has been moved there's still one radiator to be put in in the kitchen that is much bigger because that's that probably the biggest room in the house actually because it's got a huge kitchen so that is a big radiator to go in and also two heated towel rails to go in as well to replace the existing one so that's all still to come heat pump not in position yet it's still all in its packaging in the garage so hopefully that's going to happen and be moved into position in the next day or two I've got sparky coming on site as well i think tomorrow and thursday as well so yeah it's all happening we are getting there okay the end of day three now day three has been bedlam we have four people and it's like two plumbers two sparks and they were in every room in the house just about so but you know 
that's the way things go. Over here, we have a new radiator, massive radiator that's going in the kitchen, but the kitchen is quite big, so that's why the radiator has to be quite big. Over here, inside the bathroom, the downstairs bathroom, there is a new heated towel well. That looks quite good, that looks nice, that. It's white, we have chrome in the past, but the heated element is not going in. Now, I've discovered today that the uh, heated, if you've got a heated towel well, electric, obviously it's heated by the uh, hot water, but if you've got like one to use in the summer, a like summer override, you can flick a switch, turn your heated towel well on, that's not compatible with a heat pump. In other words, if a heat pump is running, then the heated towel well mustn't run at the same time. So you have to have an override, you have to have something in there that will automatically turn that off if the heat pump's running. Learned that today. They were having a bit of a conversation between them, working out how they were gonna do that. So the dining room, new radiator is fitted in here. It didn't need to be fitted in here. We didn't actually need a new radiator in here, but the old one was just knackered. So it just seemed like a good opportunity to get a new one. So let's go upstairs, see what's been going on up here, because there's been all sorts going on like up here today. So in a little room, we call this a card room, because my wife does uh, mix cards and things in here. We have a new radiator in here. So that's good, that has been put in. Uh, now in the bedroom, this is just, it's been all go today. Now, earlier on, the floor, the carpet was up and the electricians were in and they have run. Over here is the hatch into the loft and that's how you get through to the consumer unit downstairs. And then they've run a cable all the way along the floor here and then into this room here, which we've been looking at on previous days. And you basically, you can't see, but there's electrics from the consumer unit through the bedroom and into uh, through the uh, loft space here and then that will go outside and down to the heat pump so it looks very likely that the heat pump will be moved into position tomorrow which of course will be the main event and then hook everything up together so in this bathroom upstairs little mini bathroom and there is a new heated towel well in here as well now that is good because the heated towel well that was in here before was far too small. I'm also having uh, the electric added to this as well so we can heat it up in the summer. So that's what that cable is there. And there's a little hole back there for that to go through. And then around here, there is gonna be a switch added down there somewhere on the wall so we can turn that on when we need to. So the big news at the end of day four is that the heat pump is now in position and all connected up. It's not been commissioned yet though, so it's not actually working, but the heat pump is there. It doesn't look too bad actually. Quite pleased with that, it looks quite good. So elsewhere, let's have a look and see what else is going on. Well, I suppose the main changes really are up here in the hole, in the, uh, uh, in the airing cupboard. And you can see in here, there's a whole load of lagging gone on. Uh, it's a different sort of lagging to I've seen before on these sort of things. Looks a bit space age, doesn't it? Um, but presumably that's all to stop uh, heat loss and things. Um, the uh, Where the flu used to go, because I am no longer going to be spewing out emissions into the atmosphere. Uh, that has been filled in, but that's still a little bit of work to do on there. But I mean, you know, at least no water's gonna be coming in because it's been raining a lot. Uh, and also inside the little hole here, that is also uh, got quite a bit of different uh, lagging and what have you in position. So it's all looks starting to come together now. It's quite good, isn't it? Um, so the air source heat pump is out there, is commissioned, it is now working. This is actually the weekend. So this is following the completion on day five. Let's go into the uh, cupboard down here under the stairs. You can see there's a gas meter and uh, uh, electricity meter and all that sort of thing. We've up here, we have uh, a meter for the air source heat pump because you have to have uh, a generation meter just to the right of it. That's my one for the solar panels. So you've got meters all over the place. So you have to have a meter there for the, uh, for the heat pump. And in the circuit board here, uh, somewhere. Oh, there, there it is. We have air source heat pump. Uh, there's the switch for that. So that's, uh, that's good. So let's come out here. That's all been inspected as well. Marvellous. So that's good. What else can I tell you then? So uh, the job is complete. We have heated uh, towel rail in here. That's a new heated towel rail that's gone in. And uh, they had to, this is the bit they had all the problems with. So there's the switch for the, hello, 
<laughs> the dogs following me. Uh, the element, they had weird things going on with that, so that took a bit of uh, sorting out. Uh, what else can we do? Oh, we've got a much bigger radiator down here that I think I've already mentioned, much bigger. Uh, what else has been replaced? This radiator over here uh, is new, well, it's not a new radiator, it's actually been moved from over there behind that sofa and it's been moved over here. So we have a little bit of pipe work going there and going behind the TV and that goes up and I'm gonna box that in or do something with it. Um, you may, it's difficult to tell on here, but you better see that those pipes are actually quite, quite chunky pipes. And that's because of water flow from a heat pump. You want that to be moving, keep the flow going. So that means that we should be nice and toasty in here. So that's good. And dining room new radiator in here it's actually the same size as the old one but uh, the, the old radiator was just rubbish uh, nothing's changed in my office in there uh, so let's go on upstairs and in here that is another new radiator that has gone in it's a bit of a mess everywhere actually because we've obviously had to kind of move things out of different rooms and out of the loft and why you can just about make that out uh, then we're going to come in here and a bit of a change in here. So we've got some sort of boxes up on the wall here, all to do with the controls. So there's a switch there. I don't know what that is to do with the value. It's just got a button on it. I think that might be the wireless receiver actually for the controls that I'll show you in a moment. And there's a big box here that I won't need to touch. Uh, something on the screen there, not sure what that's all about. Uh, so that's, that's there and that's all nice and neat because it's all sort of out of the way and the wall that had the boiler on it is now completely clear so that is great so something else is we, we can use that space we can use it for something which is good uh, and then in here it's a bit dark in here i'm afraid that's all the other uh i should have bought a torch that's all the other bits and pieces and all the other boxes that, that kind of run the system uh, all nicely lagged now okay i'm going to very briefly show you the controls here uh, from uh, Valiant. Of course, this is going to vary according to where you buy your heat pump from. It's quite reflective, the surface of this, so I hope you can see this okay. And you can see on here, I'm just going to very quickly show you, this has got the current room temperature in here, which is just so it's 21, it's got the time, it's got the air humidity, because all these sensors I was talking about earlier, outdoor temperature is on here, and this is what the heating is set to at the moment, it's just set to be 20. And then uh, if I tap the, if I try to tap the uh, button here, there we go. Uh, so it's saying now the heating, that's the desired temperature. So if I go on here, we've got all sorts of control. I'll just go down actually to information to start off with and tap that. And then you see it can show me the current temperatures. And you can see on there that the heating uh, current temperature is 21 and domestic hot water has dropped to 34 at the moment. Uh, and that's because it hasn't run for quite a while. So let's go back. Um, current room air humidity. Uh, oh, 66, but there we go. So I, didn't, I haven't looked at that before. Uh, and we've got sort of various energy data that you can look at and all this kind of stuff, if you're interested in all that sort of thing. Uh, I'll go to control, and then you've got uh, heating control, and you can set a weekly planner. And so there we go. It's got, uh, for example, the different days of the week that you can go on there. So for example, Wednesday, and then I've got it set for, this is me just experimenting, so I added an extra the time slot in, I'm definitely not going to be setting that as permanent. So let's go back there. Um, the other thing I think is worth pointing out on here is this absence thing where you can set uh, just your heating or whatever. You can say when you're away from until and the system will automatically not run while you're uh, away on holiday, for example. Other systems, of course, are going to be different. This is just how this particular one works. So you might wonder, me being Mr. Gadget, why I haven't got an app because I, you know, I would have app for things. I write apps, why would I not have an app for this? You can get an app. And I used to have Hive for my previous heating system. And of course that had an app, uh, but I actually think I kind of don't need one. I almost thought it was almost over-engineering the solution. I kind of want to set my heating and sort of forget about it. All this setting it and going out and then, oh, I'll turn the heating on because I'm going to get home in an hour. I don't know. It's got the absence thing that you just saw on there, so I can set it when I'm going away on holiday and then forget about it and it will manage itself. I don't have to think about it when I'm away. So I kind of prefer that. I sometimes, all, I do think we sort of over-engineer solutions sometimes, but they do do an app if that does float your boat. 
I kind of looked at it. I've tried that kind of app control for heating thing and I sort of think, I don't want that in my life. I kind of want it to be simple and I want it to set it and forget it. But you may feel differently. Okay, it is now two weeks since we fast forwarded, we have two weeks since I had the heat pump installed. And it's too early, of course, to start drawing some great conclusions as to whether a heat pump is a good idea. I will be doing that, actually. I will be giving you some initial thoughts in just a moment. But suffice to say that what I will be doing is collating data over the coming weeks and months, because I want to be completely honest about this process. If this turns out to be a disaster, I am going to tell you, I'm going to be honest, even if it makes me look like a fool, uh, I'm just gonna see how it goes. I am your guinea pig. I've been saying that all along. So how's it going over the last couple of weeks? Well, I mean, there's nothing really to show you uh, here. Everything is done. Uh, let's talk about hot water because I'm recording this in September, so the heating hasn't been on, although I will talk about heating in a moment. Uh, as far as the hot water is concerned, the manufacturers of the heat pump recommend to have the heating set, sorry, the hot water set to run three times a day for two hours. So the installer had it set for 5.30 to 7.30 a.m., 12 noon to 2 p.m., and actually a little bit longer in the evening, 5.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. Now that might sound like an awful long time, six and a half hours a day to run the hot water, surely that's gonna cost silly amounts of money and just be far too much, particularly when there's only two of us in the house, a couple of dogs, they don't use a lot of hot water, frankly. And uh, well, you'd be right there. What's actually happened is that the, uh, the hot water has only been running maybe for an hour to an hour and a half a day. And the reason that it's been doing that is there are all sorts of sensors all over the system. It knows what the temperature is in the water tank. It knows what the humidity levels are. It knows what the temperature is outside and inside. It, it's, there are sensors all over the place. So it kind of knows what's going on. So what's actually been happening in reality is that the heat pump's been running from half past five till maybe six-ish maybe half an hour first thing. It doesn't always run at lunchtime at all. It might do, again, maybe half an hour at lunchtime, but sometimes it doesn't run at all. And then it will run again in the evening, again, maybe half an hour. So this means that my hot water is incredibly efficient. Uh, with my, don't get me wrong, with my gas boiler, I had set it so that it would run for the shortest time that I thought I could get away with, but it was a manual process. I had to kind of experiment with that over years to get it kind of right. But it was definitely running more often than an hour and a half, let's be honest about this. So one of the questions that I'm probably bound to be asked is how noisy is a heat pump? Well, let's have a look, shall we? So as you can see, or hear, or not hear, it's not very loud, is it? Um, now, because not all heat pumps are made equal, so this particular one is a Valen Aerotherm, and I don't know about the bigger model, they do a larger one, this is a seven kilowatt system, but it's very quiet, you have to practically climb inside it to hear it. The only, sometimes the only way I know that it's running is because the plants that are directly opposite are doing a little merry dance, but other than that, I wouldn't have a clue it's running. Okay, let's talk next about heating. Okay, I've said I haven't run the heating, and it's true, I haven't run the heating, although I have, of course, to test the system. I did have an issue with, with the heating, and it was this, and actually, this is a problem that you could have uh, with any heating system, regardless of how it's uh, powered. And that was, I had a lot of cold spots in various radiators around the house. That was caused, not by air, trapped air, which is often the thing you do, and you then you bleed your radiator. We've probably all done that. This was to do with a substance called glycol, which was put in in order to, to really clean the system out, and it stops it from getting all crud in there and just generally, you know, getting all dirty and mucky. Now, glycol is a kind of denser, a heavier, I think is probably the right way to describe it, substance than water. And so that can cause these, um, these traps, these kind of cold spots to develop. 
And what the installer recommended, he was quite happy to come back and do it. But I said, well, I'm working here. You know, I can do this because he told me what to do. He said to actually isolate each radiator that had this cold spot in it one at a time and let the heating system run. And then that will clear it. And actually that did work. In fact, it worked very quickly apart from, uh, for example, on this radiator in here that's behind me now. Can you see that? That is a massive radiator. That's a new radiator that's been put in uh, because this is a this is a big kitchen, as you can sort of maybe see behind me here. So this is a big room, and that's the only radiator in it. Um, so that was a new radiator that was put in, and that had a ma that no, all of that was completely cold, and it took probably a, like a whole morning maybe of running the heating system to get the glycol to to shift out of that. But it did work, and like I said, that's not really a heat pump thing. That is a uh, we've had a heating system cleaned out thing. So, so that happened there. And I'm pleased to say, actually, I, I, when I was researching heat pumps, I would say that I was told that everything was a lot slower because uh, when you burn stuff, you burn a fossil fuel, it heats up really quickly. And that's one of the advantages of a gas boiler. And I was under the impression that everything would be much kind of more sedate, for want of a better word, with a heat pump. But actually, the hot water heats up really quickly. And when I turn the heating on to test it, that doesn't take long to heat up either. So I, yeah, so that surprised me, but surprised me in a good way. The other thing is people have said, again on research, that the radiators are, are, are not as warm as they are with a gas boiler. Kind of, again, when I've been testing this, I haven't really noticed that, to be honest. The hot water is a brilliant temperature. That's perfect. It's not too hot, not too cold. It's just right, actually. Apart from, and this is one other final thing that I'll tell you about, and that is the Legionnaire's cycle. The heat pump, some sort of regulation apparently, the heat pump has to run once a week, uh, a Legionnaire's cycle, in order to kill any bacteria that might be in there. So it heats the hot water. Normally it goes to 48 during the week. It heats it right up to 70, I think. So of course then that makes the hot water, until you've used that hot water up, or it's naturally cooled down, quite hot so um, and that runs once a week um, the installer was saying to me that, that he's not aware of any uh, cases of, of legionnaires in a domestic environment ever anywhere uh, you might know of one and maybe you, you post in the comments if you do but he's not aware of one so he said it's kind of a regulation but it's not one that kind of makes a lot of sense so I mean that is what it is uh, I haven't got any great comments to make about that but we may return to that maybe in a follow-up video so uh, that is the end of this. It's been a long video, this one, hasn't it? But I wanted to cover the whole installation of the heat pump. Uh, I'm now going to I'm going to keep on recording and updating, and really, most importantly, I'm going to be looking at data. Uh, I have to say, at the moment, my, I've got an app on my phone from my energy supplier that gives me the kilowatt hours that I've used on electric and also gas. And of course, the gas has dropped right down to next to nothing. I still have gas. I use I have a gas hob. Uh, but that's the only gas that we use in the house and my long-term goal is to get rid of that as well and then get rid of gas um, but at the moment we still have a gas hob so my gas consumption of course has just gone down to next to nothing um, my electricity consumption yeah it has gone up but not noticeably actually surprisingly which doesn't make sense because i've run the heat pump quite a bit so far and that's a bit weird but it's too early to say exactly what's going to happen there and exactly what the costs are and everything i'm going to do all of that in a future video so thank you very much for watching do post your questions below i am not a heating engineer can you tell so i might not be able to answer all of your questions but i will do my best and uh, i hope you've enjoyed this video do like it if, uh, if you have hit subscribe if you want to be uh, here and watch when I do one of these updates I'm also talking about Project Green got some fantastic Project Green stuff coming up as I continue to move to a less environmentally hazardous lifestyle I've got some really exciting stuff coming up on that front so do subscribe if you want to watch some of that thank you so much for your company and see you again in another video she knocks her heels and crosses her heart Swallows all the tension And trusts all my intentions Without a fight I hope she's right Natalie Try to see